We are now ready for lesson 5.5 five. and uh, as you can see our title today is graphing cube root functions. Our previous lesson involved graphing square root functions and so uh, you can see our objectives. We're going to take a look at a different parent function but our principles of transformations are still going to be the same. Uh, the way we um, change the shape and the orientation of the parent the way we shift either left or right, up or down, all of those concepts that we've learned in the past are still going to be applicable today when we are looking at the parent function for the um, f of x or y equals the cube root of x. So let's just begin there with what this parent function looks like. And uh, if we think about some inputs and then calculate the outputs. Let's uh, see what some good inputs would be. Of course, uh, zero is always a good place to start. The cube root of zero is zero. And so this graph will pass through the origin. If I input one, f of one is one. The cube root of one is one. Now, unlike the previous lesson, when we were doing the square root function, and we had to be careful that the number under the radical did not end up being a negative number. Remember, that would not be real. Uh, that's not true today because when you do cube roots, uh, it is possible to take the cube root of a negative number and get a real number output. The cube root of negative 1, for example, is negative 1. Okay, we're just going to keep on going using some perfect cube numbers like 8. 8 has a perfect cube root. Uh, the cube root of 8 is 2. And if you're not sure what that phrase, the cube root, means, we're looking for the number that would multiply by itself, times itself, three times. Whoop. The, the number that would multiply times itself three times that would equal 8. Or in other words, the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, and I know you've seen that in the past, but maybe some people have forgotten. So 8, 2 is on our graph. 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 2. And that means negative 8, negative 2 is also on our graph. 2, 4, 6, 8, down 2. And these five dots, much like we did yesterday with four points to represent the parent function, f of x is the square root of x, now we're going to use these five dots and we'll just draw a curve through them. And this is our parent function, f of x is the cube root of x. All right, and one thing that we will be doing in this lesson that we did not do before, we're going to be doing uh, what are known as key characteristics. And that involves uh, domain and range. So let's just go ahead and start there. Uh, we did have to do the domain and range uh, in the previous lesson. So the domain will be all x such that uh, here's one way of expressing the domain. It's really all real numbers, and you can probably tell our graph is going to follow along the x-axis forever toward negative infinity and it's going to follow along the x-axis in the other direction toward positive infinity. So another way of saying all real numbers, I just want you to get used to seeing different ways, this would be inequality notation. We would have our value for x will be in between negative infinity and positive infinity. Another way of showing that, it means exactly the same thing, but it's just written differently. This is called interval notation. And because we do not include negative infinity and positive infinity, obviously we can never get to these. They just continue on forever and ever. Uh, we use open or parentheses to indicate that these are the ends of our domain, but we don't include them as part of the domain. You can't include infinity, again, because there is no ending. Um, I'm okay for now if you just want to go ahead and say the domain is all real numbers, but eventually you're going to need to 
uh, use these and, and now might be a good time. And whether you use the inequality notation or what we call here the interval notation or just the standard all real numbers. The range is going to be the same because this graph is going to continue as we go to the right it's going to continue to rise and so all of the y coordinates going up are going to be involved on the y-axis and that's going to be true in the other direction uh, this is going to continue to gradually work its way down forever and so all of these on the negative y-axis will be used as y coordinates so the range uh, will be the same we can use f of x such that our function is between negative infinity and positive infinity put plus there or interval notation it would look just like this or if you just said all real numbers using the abbreviation that would be uh, that would be fine for now just wanted to expose you with different ways uh, as you go forward in other math classes, you may have textbooks or teachers that either present it or maybe they require that you write a domain and range in a certain way, and I just want you to be prepared for that. In behavior, we've done this in the past. Uh, we want to analyze this graph as it travels to the right. So in other words, as x approaches positive infinity, meaning we're traveling along the x-axis to the right, the function, or y, is going up. So it's also approaching positive infinity. And now we'll analyze going to the left. As x approaches negative infinity, that's what the function is also doing. The y is approaching negative infinity. <clears throat> And then finally, this new concept, this inflection point. And what that means in a math context is um, it is a place, it's a point, where the graph basically changes direction. Okay, if you think about traveling along this graph going from left to right, you get to this point 0, 0, and then it changes. Okay, it's like it was going up this way, and then it flips over and it travels this way. So the inflection point for the parent f of x equals the cube root of x will be the origin, which is 0, 0. Okay, so that's uh, the parent graph and the key characteristics of the parent f of x equals the cube root of x. Well, it's from this parent function that we make what we might call the children functions or the graphs of uh, other functions related and this is very much like what we did in the previous lesson when this was the square root. The only difference is with the cube root parent, the cube root of x, we're going to be dealing with this parent instead of the square root which basically looked just like this. But the as, as I said in the beginning of this lesson, the principles of transformations are the same. This A number is going to affect whether or not we have vertical stretch or vertical compression. And if A is negative, that means we're going to flip the parent function over. It's going to reflect over the x-axis. H still tells us how to move horizontally, either right or left. If this number is a positive, we're moving to the right. If it's negative, causing this to be addition, then we're going to be moving to the left. K tells us how to move vertically. If K is positive, we move up. If K is negative, we move down. So with that said, let's uh, try doing some examples like your homework uh, on this uh, for this lesson. All right, so what I'm going to do, my approach to graphing these will be to start with those parent points, those five points that we came up with at the very beginning to represent the parent. 6, 8, negative 2. No need to draw the whole curve. We'll just use these as reference points. And the function that we're given represents a translation. Remember, that's just a, 
another word for a transferring or a shifting sliding of these points. And what it's telling me to do is to move all of the points on the parent four places to the right. H is literally positive four. If we go back and analyze what we might call the definition of the transformation, H is positive four. So that means all of these points will be shifted four places to the right. So that takes care of that one. Here, four to the right. The origin, four to the right. Here we are, four right. And then finally, four right. And now I'll erase the blue ones. And we'll draw a curve through these red ones. Yep. Not easy for me to use this board, but I'll try again. Uh, it's going to be close enough, I guess. Okay, and so there is the graph of this function. And now let's do our domain range. So for domain, I think I'm going to use uh, interval notation. And that means uh, negative infinity is our left bound and positive infinity on the right. That's another way of saying all real numbers. The range is the same. Okay, the end behavior as x approaches positive infinity as we travel to the right on the x-axis, the function is going up, which is also positive infinity. And as we travel to the left, the function is traveling down, which is negative infinity. The inflection point uh, for the parent, remember it was the origin, 0, 0. But you can see with the graph that inflection point has moved to the right. And so it becomes the point 4, 0. If you're not looking at a graph, and sometimes you're asked to determine the inflection point by just looking at the function, you can always determine that by taking the h and k numbers. Okay, remember h, the horizontal move, is 4 in this case. k would be something out here, either added or subtracted. And since there isn't anything, it's assumed to be, of course, 0. So just once again, just a little tip, if you're looking at the graph, the inflection point should be easy to see. But if you're not looking at the graph, you can always use the H and K numbers to determine the inflection point. And that takes care of my example 1A. So let's do this one, 1B. All right, I'm going to start with those points again. Okay, just to use them as a reference. And then we got two moves this time. This time we're going to be going left 2 because h is negative 2. And then we're going to go down 3. Okay, so each one of these, left 2, down 3. Left 2, down 3. Left 2, down 3. Left 2, down 3, left 2, down 3. All right, and now we're ready to draw through those. And there's our graph. The domain, I'll use uh, inequality notation this time, all x such that x is between, oop, Going back to interval notation, x is between negative and positive infinity. The range will be the same, just using y. The end behavior, uh, just like before, as x approaches positive infinity, we travel to the right. y approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, we travel to the left, 
y approaches negative infinity. The inflection point, uh, once again, you can look at the graph or you can look at the h and k number. Remember, h is negative 2 and k is negative 3, and that is your inflection point. And you can see that here, how it was moved from the origin down to this point, negative 2, negative 3. So that takes care of my example 1b. And now let's do 1c. And I actually want to make this a negative in this example, just to show you what happens uh, when the a value is negative. Okay, well, it begins the same way as the other two. We'll put these five points down to look at them. All right, and um, now remember what this factor negative 2 does when we were doing the square root function. We multiplied this number times the y coordinate of the parent points, just the y's. And, and that same thing is going to be true today. Okay, so I'm looking at this point right here, and the y coordinate for this point is negative 2. When I multiply that point, that y coordinate by negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So do you notice how I went from this point that has y negative 2 up to here, which has y of positive 4? And that's because this negative 2 times this y of negative 2 created y of positive 4. Okay, so I'm going to just temporarily sit here while I look at the horizontal and the vertical shift. Well, there is no h number underneath the radical. So in other words, I don't have a horizontal shift to do. So all I have is this vertical shift, and minus 6 means to go down 6. So here I am at y coordinate 4, and I'm going to go down 6. 2, 4, 6. Well, lo and behold, I end up back to where I started. And so that red dot will be on the graph of this. All right, let's move on. And this has a y-coordinate of negative 1. When I multiply negative 1 times negative 2, I get positive 2. So here I am at y is positive 2. Now I'm going to do the shift of 6 down. 2, 4, 6. And that blue dot on the parent, after doing the transformation, will become this red dot below. So I'm going to erase these as we're done with them. Now I'm going to work on the origin point. When I multiply this y coordinate, which is 0, times negative 2, I still get 0. So there is no effect on this point of multiplying by negative 2. There is no horizontal move again, so I'm going to just go down 6. And that becomes the origin point after the transformation. All right. I'm now at this point that has a y-coordinate of positive 1. But when I multiply positive 1 times negative 2, I get negative 2. So here I'm now at y is negative 2. And now continue on going 6 down. And that takes care of that point from the parent. And we have one more. This has y-coordinate 2. When you multiply that y coordinate times negative 2, you get negative 4. So here I am at y coordinate negative 4. And now let's complete it by going down 6. 2, 4, 6. And those red dots represent the graph of this function. So let's draw through them. So you can see the effect of multiplying by a negative number. Uh, previously, our functions were doing this. But the negative makes a reflection. It causes it to flip over the x-axis. OK, so domain, once again, all real numbers. Range, same thing. Now notice the end behavior is different this time. 
as x approaches positive infinity, or in other words, we're traveling to the right along the x-axis, this time the function is going to go down. So f of x will approach negative infinity. And then it will be just the opposite going the other way. As x approaches negative infinity, the function will go up. So don't just automatically assume that the n behavior is going to be the same for all of these. When the a number is negative, it causes a switch in the n behavior. All right, and then the inflection point. Well, you can see it on the graph. The origin point, which is the reflection or the point of inflection for the parent, was moved six places down. Or you can do again the h k h in this case is 0, and k is negative 6. Okay, so um, th those are three examples of the types of problems that you will be doing for your homework. And um, I hope this helps you. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to contact me.